A few months ago, Nicole bought these D&D field note journals and made a leather sleeve for them. It was a super fun project and turned out to be pretty loved by field notes themselves. As a result of that video, they sent us a whole bunch more of these journals and told us to have fun making more stuff with their notebooks. With a literal pile of supplies in front of us, I thought it would be a perfect time to finalize the design of a dice holder we have had the idea for, but haven't yet made. Using Inkscape to lay out the design, then Carbide Create to set up the cut paths and visualize it in 3D, the design phase was finished. We started these boxes over at our friend Technically Woodworking's workshop. He let us borrow his planer to plane down some ash boards we have. These are the same ash boards I used for the headphone wall. I got these boards from my parents and it's just good wood to keep using for these projects. We planed down three boards down to about one inch thick. Once the boards were planed, I marked out the best place to center the cutout, then cut them down to size on the miter saw. I needed two pieces for each box, so for this project I cut eight total pieces. With the pieces cut, I used the old painter's tape and superglue method, but replaced the superglue with carpet tape. This was done to avoid superglue getting onto the finished surface. It ended up working pretty well as I had no issues once the piece was stuck to the CNC table. I set up the cut with Carbide Create and started the job. Setting zero first, then going through the around two hour cut job. The job starts with a planing pass with a one inch bit. This is also used to take off a good chunk of material from the top where the acrylic panel will sit. Then we move to using a quarter inch bit that removes most of the material, specifically the dice holding area as well as the wells for the spell cards, and the main cutout of the box itself. The 60 degree V-carve bit works great to chamfer the edges of the spell card wells and the dice holders. Finally, a 16th inch bit makes quick work of cutting holes for the magnets to be placed in later. That finishes up the dice side, now for the notebook side. It starts similarly using the 1 inch bit to plane down and take out a bunch of material. An 8th inch bit cuts the magnet holes on this side. A quarter inch ball nose bit cuts the thumb groove to make the box easier to open. To note, I also did this on the dice side in later versions. The V-carve bit once again cuts the chamfers. The quarter inch down cut bit finishes up the pencil holder pocket and cuts out the piece. On to the acrylic. This piece is a great place to take temporary notes and stats using a dry erase marker. We use the Glowforge to engrave and cut it out. The engrave is pretty accurate, but to make sure the magnets will fit, I clean out the holes with a 3mm drill bit. Then I can smash the magnets in place. They go in with just friction, and I have yet to see any pop out. On the wood side of things, I do use some super glue to affix the magnets, as I don't trust that they will stay put. Since I didn't want to make just one of these, I came up with a few different finishing techniques to try out. The first was finished with a walnut minwax finish. I ended up pretty much completely saturating the piece, but it worked well. The next box was finished with black India ink, borrowed from our friend Ben at Make for Life Workshop. I wiped it on similar to the oil base finish, but this stuff is super fluid. It's wetter than water and weird to apply. After it was applied and dried, I sprayed on a clear top coat to seal it. The last box, I wanted to get weird with it, so I used the green water-based Minwax finish we used on the cabinets in the craft room. This stuff applies easy but dries fast, so I had to keep moving quickly. To bind the boxes together like a book, I decided to use leather. The laser cutter was employed once more to cut out the shapes of the leather, and wow, does it smell bad! Before I attach the leather, I cut out some templates to make sure I can glue the leather on as accurately as possible. Painter's tape holds the template and barge will hold down the leather. I apply a generous amount to make sure it sticks permanently. To attach the accent piece, I tape down the other template I cut. And with some masking, keeping the leather safe, I add more barge and then attach the thin piece of leather. 
Moving on to the India ink box, I'm using the reddish leather as the spine, quickly cutting out a chunk that fits in the laser cutter, then cutting out the piece. As the clear coat is glossy, I scuff it up a bit before adding the barge. Then glue and attach the same as the previous box. I chose a dark purple leather to be the accent for this one. To get it to fit, it has to be cut in separate pieces, then assembled when attached. There was an issue here though. The barge was way too visible on the edge of the purple leather, and it looked pretty bad. So I scrounged around the craft room and found that we have some purple heart veneer. So I cut that out and attached it to cover my problems. It turned out better than I thought. Now for the green box, we go back to the Shapoko and I make a jig so that I can cut on the surface of the green box halves. The plan is to cut out where the leather will attach so that it is flush with the wood. Once that's done, I cut out the reddish leather and the purple leather on the laser cutter. To keep things clean, I mask the wood surface. Then I barge it all up and stick it all together. Like the last one, I had a problem. I cut a little too deep with the CNC. Also, the leather shapes and the CNC cuts were different sizes, so the gaps between the leather and wood weren't great. Plus, the whole thing looked weirdly flat. After a bit of thinking, I designed something in Fusion 360 to cover the gaps and printed it in bronze metallic PLA. It attaches via tiny screws and made the entire box look so much better. One last step to finish these was to cut out the leather and felt inserts for all the pocket cuts. The walnut box got tan leather, the India ink box got a reddish leather, and the green box got some dark magenta felt. Finally, I could take off the acrylic masking. And they were done. Oh yeah, there's four of them here. Uh, I made a prototype completely off camera, but it turned out pretty well, so I wanted to include it here. Huge shout out to all of our Patreon members. It's because of you guys we can make cool things like these custom dice boxes. If you want access to the files or more information on the Field Note D&D books, links will be in the description below. Thanks so much and see you all next time.